And so I think when you grow up not having stuff, you, I think it gives you this hunger, this desire to achieve. And the way that the world tells you you achieve is through success. I guess when I started working, um, I had this goal that I would, if I manage more people, it would mean that I was really being successful. So in my mind, it was you were given a task or project to do, and you accomplish it to the best of your abilities, and you deliver the results that were expected, and you would be a good manager. So the more I would accomplish, the more we would deliver the results, I would get promoted. I move to companies, I do consulting, other stuff. I keep getting rewarded, my clients are very happy. Then it becomes a self-reinforcing thing, right? It was never about the people on the team. The team, people on the team were just meant to be there to work with me to accomplish that goal. It never occurred to me at the time that I should really care about what they really thought. There was a few probably moments where it may have dawned on me that the way I was doing it wasn't the best way. And I'm not proud of any of those times because I realized that I had only brought a part of myself to work. You know, was I really, some, was I really that uncaring as a person? Was I really that cold? So then when I started Awaken Group, one of my mentors, um, he did an assessment of me. And he said, you know, you have one of the most dysfunctional childhoods of anyone I've ever met. And it really started, it triggered for me this journey of understanding dysfunction. There was a certain um, set of rules or things that I had imposed on myself of how I had to be at work, which was cold, task-oriented, achievement-oriented. Uh, with my family, I could be a certain way. In my nonprofit work, I could be a certain way. But they were all like separate bubbles. And I guess as I went on that journey of finding myself and learning what the, what, why I was so dysfunctional, I learned about what it meant, what integrity really meant. I realized I did not have a lot of integrity in who I was being because I was so compartmentalized. As I then realized and I said, okay, I'm going to start to be, I'm going to give myself permission to bring my heart and bring more of myself into the workplace. So it wasn't about um, trying to be a leader. It was just, let me try to be bold. And then something amazing started to happen. People started to be attracted and come out of the woodworks. The number of people I had who just offered to work for me for free, people um, wanting to partner for totally non-commercial reasons, uh, it was unclear like what they really wanted, it seemed like they just wanted to hang out and that was weird. <laughs> All these things, uh, um, the team that kept forward were the most amazing people and there was joy as I started working with them. We'd laugh and have fun at work. Our clients would see the joy and it would be infectious and then they started being happy and asking us if we really liked each other. It, uh, as a result of being more whole, the impact of that seems to have been that people want to follow. Then all those different circles in my life could actually be integrated into one whole and I realized that's what integrity is. I still have to manage my teams, I still have to manage my clients, but I can also be myself and do it in a way that's authentic and human. I guess if you were to ask, do you have to choose? I would say no. Do both. Be a manager and a leader. Do it authentically in a way that's integrated with what you believe and what you value. To make a conscious choice to be open and brace yourself for the beauty that you might see when that happens. <laughs>